Hi everyone, Real Thinny Punk Tano here, the internet's <laughs> busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Soul Glow album, Diaspora Problems. This is the fourth full-length LP from East Coast punk outfit Soul Glow, their first for Epitaph Records, and comes after a series of hardcore-leaning EPs that introduced me to the band's music over the past couple of years, causing me to go into their back catalog, which honestly has very much been a treat. It was just one of those moments where I was like, shit, what have I been missing out on? Because I most definitely would have heaped praise onto their last full-length LP had I heard it. Because even in the raw state that their earlier releases are, my god, this is just some punishing hardcore. The performances are so completely out of control, unhinged, and in a way reminds me of what the genre was at its peak in the 80s. The aggression feels less calculated, the intensity of the sound less indebted to how loud the production is, and is more due to how wild the playing is. Which again, reads like many early classic Discord record releases, as well as the early stuff of suicidal tendencies, or even bad brains. However, I have to say, Diaspora problem Problems is not just some exercise in hardcore nostalgia, because punk is often a genre that can be obsessed with its past to a fault, which can lead to stuff like gatekeeping as well as favoring sonically a tradition over progression, but that is very much not a problem on this record. In fact, the way Soul Glow combines elements of hardcore, indie, noise, and screamo is pretty refreshing, plus they're not exactly shy about suddenly breaking into a song that has more hip-hop leanings too. I should also praise the songs on this record too, because the songs are good. Take the opening track here, for example, which I know listening to it, it's very easy to get whipped up in the speed and intensity of the whole thing, but it actually takes a lot of thought about structuring and dynamics to write a song like this that is this long and firing on all cylinders almost the entire time, and it doesn't get boring, it doesn't get drab, it's just like edge of your seat from start to finish. From the bright and sort of jangly guitar chords that open the intro, to the chugging breakdowns toward the end, underneath refrains of, Who got beat my ass? Who got beat my ass? And I wouldn't gloss over the lyrics either. They are an absolute shotgun blast of reflections on materialism, violence, insecurity, societal pressures to give in to normalized bullshit. Like some of the best hardcore bands of all time, I think you'll find that Soul Glow has a lot to say, a whole lot to say, sometimes to the point where, you know, the, the rhythm and meter of the vocals is kind of just thrown to the wayside because uh, what's more important is just getting out this lyrical machine gun fire. So next from here we have the song Coming Correct is Cheaper, which th th they did not sample the think break on this song. <laughs> You know, that popular sample that's made it in uh, many a dance and hip-hop song over the years. Uh, yeah! Woo! It's been used so many times from It Takes Two to even the latest Porter Robinson record. And now it is here on this completely enraged hardcore punk diatribe about constantly feeling judged and appraised and limited by the expectations of modern society. There's even a point where the lyrics here become a devastating statement on like a generational dead end in terms of having hopes for uh, the aspirations that uh, your kids will have or the things that they'll achieve beyond you. Plus that line about eating the rich and tradition and habits coming connected to fine print that are that are being handed down to you. Like, the social commentary on this record is mwah. Thumbsucker continues to see the band throwing left hooks into the track list with some really rock and hardcore riffs and uh, peppy horn sections that actually pair together really well. Fucked Up If True hits with some riffs that dabble in a little bit of crossover thrash, topped with enraged lyrics about our broken political system that does not serve the majority of voters. Oh, and the noisy death metal breakdown on the back end is really cool. Jumper Get Jumped, I loved as a single. It sounds just as sick in the track list, too. I would say the band is absolutely nailing this balance between these thoughtful songs that obviously have a lot of care and planning put into them, but they deliver them in such a way that feels manic, out of control, and overwhelming. Dripponomics was another teaser to the record that was a little off-putting at first, but the more I hear it, the more it grows on me. It's like this noise, rap, punk fusion that features a lot of bars a lot of flows that sound like ASAP Ferg rapping off of a helium tank. 
<laughs> over a grimy trap beat laced with all of these like power electronics and, and feedback samples. And the whole track is about selling and upselling hype beast clothes and like, you know, designer stuff. Yeezy, Birkin, Nike, all these name brands. The Mother Mary Rose feature is a perfect fit and overall it's just a very clever and novel, funny topic idea for a song. Five Years in My Family tells a story of one's personal progression to punk and the way tragedy and difficult family dynamics can make it hard to come to certain realizations about yourself and your mental health. Like, again, when I say this album does a lot and is speaking to a lot, it really is. The grinding riffs and blast beats on the things I carry makes for another blistering moment. Even more searing are the lyrics, which are packed with all of this radical self-accountability, describing a lot of personal toxic behavioral patterns over sinister guitar leads, some spoken word passages from the featured artist on the track Bearcat 2, all of which come together and make for a very visceral but dark combination. We Want's Revenge is probably the most cut and dry track on the entire LP. It doesn't get more explicit than blaring riffs and screamo vocals that are doubled up and so hard hitting it gives Blood Brothers old stuff a run for its money. I wouldn't say there's a whole lot of gray area in the lyrics too. The final moments of this record refuse to sink into something that's run-of-the-mill. John Jay's relentless drums and frightening noise core riffs are great, even if at points the lyrics may be a bit much in terms of just scrambling to get it all out. Still, the breakdown and demonic chorus vocals around the midpoint and the build and feature the song delivers from there is great. God Bless Y'all Real Good hits with a bit of a narrative switch as... Uh, topically, I would say this song is diving pretty deep into some very personal and very petty drama. I mean, it's not as if hardcore doesn't have a tradition of embracing narratives of betrayal. It, it definitely does. But man, this very long-winded story about friends, or, or rather ex-friends, it goes, it's explosive, it hits hard, but I also feel like I'm I'm kind of reading an endless, like... Twitter thread of just like people who know each other going at each other's throats. <laughs> we then from here have the closer, a spiritual level of gang shit, where Soul Glow kind of takes the whole LP out on a, a sort of mellow hip hop vibe with really spacey instrumentation, some pretty solid features from McKinley Dixon as well as Logi. For the first half, I would say this track is a little average instrumentally though, outside of the pummeling hardcore riffs popping in here and there to transition us from one section to the next. And um, I blown away by it, no, but I will say it's still better than the vast majority of punk rap fusions I've heard over the course of my lifetime, and I lived through the 2000s. Plus, the whole thing comes to a massive finish with really heavy horn sections and a refrain that brings a sense of togetherness, which I think is a nice change of pace from all of the, uh, you know, division and tension going on in many of the narratives across the record up to this point. Shit, what a good-ass fucking punk record, my god. Like, Again, performances, writing, riffs, messaging, production, songwriting, everything is just on fucking point. The versatility and creativity too. The fact that this band stared right in the face the difficulty, the challenge of modernizing and updating in, in a great way, like one of the most tried and true like stylistically black and white genres of underground music and just thwarted that, just completely overcame that problem with no hesitation whatsoever. Even though there are spots of the record that I think are just a little over the top, just doing a bit too much, combined with the fact that uh, the track list does fall apart a bit in terms of cohesion toward the end, uh, still with all of that, like, man, this thing is mind-blowing, it's great, it's amazing, it's fantastic. This was easily one of my most anticipated albums of the year, and it met my expectations and went far beyond them as well, really blew them out of the water for the most part. I'm feeling a decent too strong nine on this one. Tran, Zishin, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head, it's another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Soul Glow, forever.